So, it's Organic September. I am at Dartington Hall, the home of the Schumacher College. My name is Tim Field. I'm from Dalesford, and I'm joined by a founder of uh, the Schumacher College, Satish Kumar. Um, and I, who better to talk about Organic September and what it means to you than a founder of Schumacher College who is and, and who are the pioneers of the organic movement and will hopefully help us transition into a, a bright future. So, Satish, thank you so much for having me down. You are very welcome, and I'm delighted to be a part of <clears throat> Organic September. I'm delighted to be a part of Organic September. It's a wonderful initiative, and I would like to congratulate Dalesford Organic, who are one of the great uh, food producers on an organic way, and food distributors in an organic way. And so it's a wonderful collaboration between Dalesford Organic and Schumacher College. Thank you very much. Thank you. When we last spoke at the Summer Festival last summer, um, we signed a pledge to reduce food waste, and you ended your signature with three dots, and it stuck with me. And you explained that those dots were soil, soul, and society. And I thought, what better way to frame a conversation about an extraordinary year we're having with 2020, but also, of course, uh, the celebration of Organic September. So perhaps um, we'll start with soil. How does organic relate to the soil, and uh, how important is <clears throat> soil in organic? First of all, the soil from which our food comes is in itself, or in herself, an organism. And because it's an organism, we need to treat it organically and not chemically. Soil is the source of life. Our body is soil transformed. Our food, we eat potatoes and cabbages and cauliflowers and wheat and rice and all the fruit, all the vegetables, all the flowers. They are soil transformed. So the most important challenge for humanity is how to treat soil, which we are. Soil and humans are one. They are not separate. We are totally dependent on the soil. We are interconnected and interrelated with the soil. So this connection has to be celebrated, has to be honored, has to be cherished, and has to be cared for. At the moment, many people look at the soil and see it as a, a resource for the economy, a resource for making money and profit. For me, that is a wrong view. Soil is not a resource for the economy. Soil is a source of life itself. The moment we have that attitude, that understanding, we transform our relationship with the soil and treat soil 100% organically, in a very natural way. Because soil is vibrant, it's a living soil. It has life and it will multiply whatever you put in the soil. You put one seed in the soil, that one seed will become an apple tree and will give you a thousand, uh, uh, thousand apples. That's the kind of multiplication quality of the soil. So we must respect it. We should not look at soil and think that, oh, soil is dead and soil is lifeless and we have to put chemicals and fertilizers and pesticides and herbicide. That is not understanding the true nature of soil. So treating soil is the most important challenge and most important responsibility of every human being. And do you think that uh, the world and, um, well, the UK, do you think we've neglected our soils? Do you think that... It's just climate change that's causing perhaps desertification or is this over-exploitation of soils? We have got this idea that the earth and nature is a machine mm. and not an organism. This notion has led us to believe that we have to operate the soil and operate nature altogether like a machine. And therefore we are using all the kind of artificial ways of growing food. And our aim is to produce food for a mass market. So it's not the quality of food, but it's the quantity of food which has become the obsession. Therefore, 
we have taken a wrong route in this industrial age where uh, we have forgotten how to take care of the soil. We are only thinking about how to multiply mm. our profit and how to increase the quantity rather than uh, cherish and honor the quality of soil and quality of food and quality of our relationship with the soil and with the food. Quite right. And that's uh, uh, something that a good friend of yours, Vandana Shiva, says. It's not about calories per acre or, or yield per acre. It's about nutrient per acre. That's so it's right. the quality, it's the density of that nutrition. That's absolutely, that's absolutely, yeah. So we need to understand that soil is the source of life and, and soil is our real wealth. Money is only a measure of wealth. Mm -hmm. The land and the soil and the trees and the natural world. It's a natural capital. It's a real wealth. And so we must look after it as a natural capital mm -hmm. and not deplete it and not diminish it. Yes. As, as your book leads on nicely. Yes. How important is the soul to our well-being? And uh, um, how have you personally found... Um, the last six months in yourself and how have you managed that uh, last six months? Yeah. So um, I bring soul in this trinity of soil, soul society because soul, our spirit, our heart determines our relationship with the soil and with nature. And so heart qualities and soul qualities are compassion, kindness, respect, generosity, Love, these are the soul qualities. And as we cultivate the soil, we also cultivate the soul. Mm -hmm. So that as in soil, we have apples and oranges and bananas and uh, pears and grain, uh, wheat, rice, uh, potatoes, everything grows from the soil. In the same way from the soul, we have compassion, kindness, respect, generosity. Uh, all these beautiful qualities grow. And then... There's a beauty. Soul qualities and soil qualities come together and produce beauty. Art, <laughs> imagination, culture, those things come from the soul qualities. Otherwise, you can look at nature as an object mm -hmm. and look at the soil as an object and treat it as an object. But that relationship of respect and love and compassion and kindness and generosity and imagination and art and aesthetics and beauty, they don't come by objectification of the soil and of nature. That comes from the subjectification, that we are members of one earth community. And that feeling comes from the soul, comes from our heart. And therefore, I believe that we need to cultivate the soul qualities. And in cultivating soul qualities, we look after ourselves. We, we, as we love soil, we also love ourselves. Mm -hmm. Loving yourself is not ego. Loving yourself is not selfish. Loving yourself is to recognize yourself that I am in the service of soil. I'm in the service of society. I'm in the service of humanity. I am here in relationship. And that relationship is the core of soul quality. Do you believe that looking after your soul helps you get through these incredibly difficult Time. Absolutely, absolutely. This uh, coronavirus and the COVID-19 has been a great crisis in our whole world. And in my view, the COVID-19 is a voice of the earth. Human nature relationship has not been very healthy and harmonious. We have treated nature as an object and we have been thinking, the humanity has been thinking for the last 50 to 100 years that our task is to conquer nature subjugate nature and exploit nature for human benefit. This notion has led to encroachment of wildlife, encroachment of land more and more, and we are expanding our commercial farming into wild places and cutting down the rainforest, cutting down all the wild places, diminishing the biodiversity, and that has come back as a kind of bouncing back, and that has created this COVID-19 and, and uh, uh, the coronavirus and this crisis. And the whole world now needs to rethink and reflect that what has been our relationship with the natural world. And for me personally, this has been a time for reflection. Almost, you can say, a spiritual retreat 
for the last six months, I have been in spiritual retreat. Mm. And I have been reflecting and thinking, what is human nature relationship? And how we can bring back that respect and love for nature and, and treat nature with respect and love and care. And so um, during this time, I've been reading poetry. Mm -hmm. And I mean, Shakespeare, I mean, Shakespeare had been saying, tongues in trees. Books in running brooks, <laughs> sermons in stones, and good in everything. That's a Shakespeare's teaching. William Blake I have been reading, and he says, nature is imagination itself. And so all these great sort of naturally um, inspiring poets and uh, books I have been reading. And also this has been a time for me to garden. Mm. My garden has been my solace and my refuge during the six months period. And so I have been also doing a lot of gardening and walking in nature. And when you are in nature, I feel completely at ease, happy, joyful. For me, nature is my religion. Nature is my temple. Nature is my church. Nature is my Bible. Like Shakespeare says, sermons and stones. I don't have to go to any holy book. Nature is holy and sacred. So I have been walking by the sea. I Fortunately, I live near the Atlantic Ocean uh, in North Devon. So I've been walking along the coast path. So that has been my spiritual retreat. But I also feel that during this time, lots of people have shown their soul qualities, mm -hmm. generosity, mm -hmm. help, mutual aid. Many, many people, and particularly the growers and the farmers, they have been growing food mm -hmm. and looking after humanity looking after the general public by providing the food. So like the nurses, like the doctors, I would say food growers, farmers and gardeners are the essential workers and they have proved to be the essential workers of this critical time yes. of cor coronavirus time. And, and everything is closed, but the food has to be produced and distributed <laughs> and eaten. So, so Dalesford Organic Shop has been open and the farm uh, people have been working on the farm and the garden. And that's everywhere in the world. So I would say that this coronavirus critical time has been also a time for uh, coming out of ourselves and, and looking after each other and feeling a sense of community with people and a community with the uh, Mother Earth, uh, Mother Nature. Mm. What advice have you got to uh, those that perhaps are less fortunate, don't have access to the great outdoors, live in the cities? Or I think the, the idea of reading poetry, reading about nature is wonderful. Is there anything that, that you do or you could advise to people to uh, connect with nature from their own inner city living? Is there Even in the cities, big cities like London, Birmingham, New York, Paris, <laughs> Tokyo, Beijing, New Delhi, wherever you are, you can grow some plants and vegetables on your roof. Mm. You can even have window boxes. You can even have a small garden where you can grow some vegetables or plant some flowers or have an apple tree. Even on the walls, you can have a little greenery and you can put some plants on the wall, mm. a kind of vertical garden. And so even in the city, if people are aware, if they have a consciousness and if they put their attention and focus on being close to nature and respecting nature, they can find ways. And London, for example, it has Hampstead Heath, Richmond Park, Regent's Park, Hyde Park, many, many wonderful parks. I think people should go and volunteer to be gardeners in the parks and look after trees, and plant trees, and look after water, and clean the water. Mm -hmm. Even in the cities, people should volunteer, and go in the gardens, and in the parks, and in the heaths, and, and be in nature. But when we are nature, we are rejuvenated. Yes. Your soul, and your imagination, and your spirit, and your heart is inspired. And without nature, we get depressed, and we get very kind of uh, um, narrow, and our kind of very mean, all that comes from by being isolated mm. and disconnected. Our connection with nature, our relationship with nature is the most inspiring and most healthy. If you want to be healthy, I'm 84 and I'm in good health because I live in nature and I work in the garden 
and I walk in nature. So if you want to be healthy and have a good life, be in nature, live close to nature. Even we can go out in nature and walk in nature. Do you think this is the, the, an opportunity for change in society now that we're starting to think about how societies could work better? Yeah. Is yeah. now an opportunity, do you think? Yeah, absolutely. I think it's a great opportunity. And during the coronavirus crisis, this COVID-19, we have seen how society has come together and how so many people, irrespective of their class, their uh, background, their gender, their um, race, anything, people have come together on mutual aid and help. We have been a little bit too individualistic in the past. And we have been thinking about me, me, me. But this period of crisis has given us an opportunity to move and shift from me culture to we culture. And we culture is the culture of society. We are not just uh, isolated, disconnected, separated individuals pursuing our own path and that's it. We are social animals. And we have to cultivate good relationship with our fellow human beings, our neighbors, whoever they are, men, women, children, black, white, rich, poor, educated, uneducated, city dwellers, um, uh, rural dwellers, whoever you are, you are a human being. You are a member of my society. We are one human community. Mm -hmm. This consciousness has to, be has to be cultivated and should remain even after COVID crisis has gone and coronavirus has gone, we should not become too individualistic. Mm. Individual, yes, but individualism is no. Individual in relationship with society and community. That is my ideal. This is why I say soil, soul, society. These three go together. This is my new trinity for yeah. our time. Wonderful, wonderful. And I love uh, your latest article in Resurgence magazine um, about, uh, you know, the that we, don't, we shouldn't depend on these abnormal times to come together and celebrate our farmers that are producing the food and so on and get in touch with nature because yeah. we've been told by Boris to go out and get an hour's exercise. Yeah. This needs to be the new normal where we connect with where our food comes from. And what better time than organic September to, to remember that? Absolutely. I think organic September gives us a time to focus on these ideas mm. and see that farmers are... The, the crux of life. They are the jewel of our society. We have been kind of uh, um, giving dignity to people who work in offices, banks, wherever. But we have forgotten our farmers. Mm. We have forgotten our land laborers. If you work in a bank, you may get thousand pounds a day. But if you work on a farm, you get maybe hundred pounds a day. Why we should not have dignity of labor and dignity of farming Farm workers and labourers are the essential workers. Without farm workers and farmers and growers and gardeners, we cannot survive. We can survive without offices and computers and cars <laughs> and aeroplanes and trains and all the big things in cities. But we cannot survive without food. So we should seize farmers and gardeners as the most essential workers of our society. And therefore, this um, organic September gives us this time and opportunity uh, an occasion to celebrate farmers and honor farmers and remember that not only in September, this September is a good time to focus, but even after September, we should remember that farmers should be honored and respected and, and, the, and the dignity of manual work and dignity of farm work should be brought yeah, back. That's absolutely right. And, uh, you know, as we go into this transition for a new world that we need, um, where we respect where our food comes from and so on. Um, going back to Organic September and, how, and, and the transition to that place, how do you learn to become an organic farmer? <laughs> how do you learn to become an organic grower? <laughs> now, this is a big, good question. As you said, I'm a founder of Schumacher College. And at Schumacher College, we have training for organic farming and organic gardening. And Schumacher College is based at Dartington Hall. And Dartington Hall has 1,000 acres of land. And we want to devote this 1,000 acres of land for 
hundreds of young people who want to learn gardening, who want to learn farming, who want to be organic growers. We want to welcome them here and teach them how to grow food, how to be organic growers and organic farmers so that they can go back and, and be. I would like to see everybody in our society being a part-time organic farmer. Everybody should have uh, a garden. Everybody should have some time to touch the soil and be in nature and look after the animals and look after our, um, our uh, trees and forests. So, and then part-time intellectual work. So you can also write poetry or paint <laughs> or do office work and send your emails and do your other things. So intellectual work and physical work should be married together and we should not have a divorce that you, some people are only organic growers and farmers and manual workers and laborers and other people are only office workers. Why not bring those two together? So that would be my ideal. And at Dartington and at Schumacher College, we are initiating this um, project and we want to transform Dartington Hall as a learning center. And already we used to have a hotel here and the hotel is now closed and we are not going to open it as a hotel, we are going to turn it into a learning center. So your question, how we learn, Dartington can provide one answer. Well, excellent. And of course, come to Dalesford as well with the cookery school courses and, and um, this Harvest Festival, this uh, Organic September, we're doing the usual farm yeah. tours. So that's a wonderful thing. And, and there's where organic practice. people can learn. And there are many other places mm. starting mm. this sort of thing where people can learn. And so I think that's a wonderful thing. And I would like to congratulate Dalesport Organic for um, flying the flag of organic food and organic growing and, and, and a quality and the beauty and aesthetics. All these things come together at Dalesport uh, Farm and Dalesport Organic. And whenever I come to Dalesport, I am always inspired. Wonderful. Well, we enjoy having you up to, uh, to teach uh, both our staff and our guests at Dalesford. Yes. Um, thank you very much, Satish. Uh, it's been enlightening hearing about uh, your interpretation of organic in soil, soul and society. Uh, and thank you for inviting me down to Dartington Hall. What a magnificent place. It's my pleasure. Thank you, Satish. You are welcome.